On today's Smart 7, it's all kicked off in Westminster. Barry Humphrey says goodbye, possums and lots more. It's Monday the 24th of April. It's National Pigs in Blankets Day and happy birthday, Kelly Clarkson. The Smart 7. It's news, but not the news. It's been quite the weekend in Westminster. Friday saw Dominic Raab resign as Deputy PM after an inquiry into bullying allegations found that he is, in fact, a bully. Raab was facing eight complaints for more than 20 civil servants, two of which were upheld by the report. But not everyone agrees with the findings. One of the upheld complaints came from a UK ambassador and former Brexit minister Jacob Rees-Mogg had some choice words for him. You can't intimidate an ambassador, or if you can, the ambassador's no good. Ambassadors have to have a backbone to represent the country abroad. This is really important. Is our ambassador a complete wet wipe? Raab was replaced as UK deputy by former culture minister Oliver Dowden, who was immediately sent on the Sunday morning media round to try and save face. Dom promised that if there was an adverse finding against him, he would resign. I know that Dom is a man of his word, and he resigned, and as the Prime Minister said, I think that was the right thing to have done. But the chaos didn't end there. Sunday afternoon saw Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer withdraw the whip from MP Diane Abbott. It comes after she wrote a letter for The Observer implying that Jewish people, Irish people and travellers don't experience systemic racism in the same way as people of colour. Diane since apologised for the remarks, but Jake Wallace-Simons from the Jewish Chronicle says Keir was right to suspend her. She's trying to redefine racism as only an experience of black people and denying in the process uh, the racism experienced by Jews and equating it to the bigotry that people express towards ginger people. I mean, it's absolutely mm. third and offensive. It's right that Kiyosama has suspended her. That's the sound of the new UK-wide emergency alert system which was played out across millions of mobile phones on Sunday afternoon in its first nationwide test. It'll allow the government and emergency services to send a notification to mobile phone users warning them if there's a life-threatening emergency nearby, like extreme flooding or fires. Similar services are already used in the US, Canada, the Netherlands and Japan and head of the UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, Loretta Heber girard says this is a step in the right direction. This is very much part of what a government should be providing to its people so that they are better prepared and able to withstand uh, disasters. Ofsted boss Amanda Spielman's defended the way the organisation carries out school inspections in England following criticism over the death of a headteacher. Ruth Perry died by suicide in January while awaiting an Ofsted report downgrading her school from an outstanding to an inadequate rating. Her family says she'd been experiencing anxiety and stress following the inspection and are calling for a system overhaul. But Amanda says that negative Ofsted experiences are rare. For the vast majority of schools, I know that it's a positive and affirming experience. It is designed to be a constructive professional dialogue. But National Education Union Chief Mary Boosted wasn't convinced by the comments. She says Ofsted are out of touch. Nobody wants to duck the importance of being measured. You've got to be measured by people who know what they're doing. Ofsted have changed their inspection framework five times in the last nine years. This is an inspectorate which has lost its legitimacy. Fighting continued in the Sudanese capital of Khartoum this weekend and there's a growing fear that things could escalate into civil war. Several countries have started evacuating foreign nationals living in the region and UK Foreign Secretary James Cleverley confirmed that British diplomats and their families were being evacuated on Sunday. It's led to concern for the hundreds of other British citizens who remain trapped in Sudan, however. But James says the government will do everything it can to help. We continue to call for a ceasefire. The safety and protection of uh, British nationals in Sudan remains a top priority for us. Still to come on the Smart 7, FA Cup glory for Manchester and Carol Vorderman is back. Right after this. Ah, oh, jeez, Dad, not the car again. No, oh, happens all the time with old Betsy. Have you checked out Carvana yet? They have thousands of cars for under $20,000. But do those thousands of cars have personality like old Betsy? Betsy's held together by tape. And there are raccoons living in the engine. It's a family car. Uh, there are flames on the hood? Ah, custom paint job. No, Dad, the car's on fire. How many cars did you say Carvana had? Visit Carvana.com to shop thousands of cars for under $20,000. We'll drive you happy at Carvana. Welcome back.
It's been a busy weekend of FA Cup action at Wembley. Saturday saw Man City comfortably beat Sheffield United 3-0 in the first semi-final, ending their dream of being the first team outside the top division to lift the trophy since 1980. On to Sunday, where 12-time winners Man United took on a Brighton side desperate to make their second ever Cup final appearance. But it wasn't to be, as Man United won 7-6 on penalties. It sets up a first ever Manchester derby for the final in June, and Man United boss Eric Ten Hag was relieved. I'm happy especially after Thursday. Uh, we had a really bad game there. Uh, we were really disappointed and frustrated after the game, but we bounced back and not the first time this season. So a uh, big compliment and credits to the team. I'm a Celebrity is back. Well, sort of. I'm a Celeb South Africa kicks off on ITV on Monday night and there's a twist. The new season sees a whole host of famous faces return to compete to be king or queen of the jungle for the second time. The All-Star series was pre-recorded last year so there'll be no public vote. Instead, the contestants will compete against each other to be crowned the first ever I'm a Celeb legend. It's an incredible lineup with Janice Dickinson, Phil Tufnell and Amir Khan all returning but I don't think anyone's more excited than Countdown star Carol. Vorderman. I'm back. My name is Carol Vorderman, probably most famous for doing the maths on Countdown. The reason why I want to do it again is because I loved every second. <laughs> There was sad news on Saturday as legendary Australian comedian Barry Humphreys passed away at the age of 89. His seven-decade career took him from stage to screen, but he was perhaps best known for his comic character persona Dame Edna Everidge, who landed her own UK talk show in the 1980s. Here he is explaining the inspiration behind the iconic character. I used to sit in the back seat of the bus and impersonate the Lady Mayoress of the next town because everywhere we went there was always a party after the show and the Lady Mayoress would always stand up and say, what a wonderful thing it was that these people were bringing Shakespeare to the Australian bush. And then she'd get the name of the play wrong. And of course, who could forget the time he uh, <coughs> accidentally got Dermot mixed up with Philip on this morning. Rest in peace, possum. When he came out and told us about his sexuality... <laughs> and... No, no. Because I think a lot of people respected you for that. Thank you. I I'll think they did. That on to the gentleman who's here for Mother the First. <laughs> it what? You've been listening to the Smart Seven. We'll be back tomorrow at seven a.m. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes, we'll give you the world.